Hello and welcome to Adepicos Online. This is the first module purpose of the overall learning journey of how to lead and we're looking at step two, creating a powerful vision. Why does a vision matter for leaders? There are three fundamental ideas in vision that make it crucial for any successful leader. These are direction, inspiration and unity. First of all, direction. If you're leading people, then you need to be leading them somewhere. You can't just be making it up as you go along. So that's the first step that vision provides. A clear direction. Not only does it describe where we're going and what we're working to achieve, but crucially, it describes why are we even doing this? Because that really matters for people. They don't just need to know what they're trying to do. They need to understand why we're working to achieve it. And that's one of the crucial things that vision does. Secondly, inspiration. You're not trying to boss people around and order them and tell them what to do. That's not the role of leadership. Leadership is about inspiring and mobilizing and motivating people to work together to achieve the goals. And an inspiring vision enables people to do that because they feel excited. They're actively working to achieve this great vision because they believe in it so much. And then third, unity. In the last module, we talked about responsibility and the idea of a common center responsibility in the team. But that's not enough to enable the team to keep going together through time. We need to be going towards the same place. And that's what the vision provides. It provides a common focus point for all members of the team to work together as one unified entity to achieve the dream. So let's think about this in the context of a football team. Let's imagine one team's vision is to provide a positive impact on the local community. And another team has the vision of being the best football team in the world. Now, the crucial thing here is that both visions are equally valid. And we can't really talk about vision as being better than the other vision because it's not really about betterness. Instead, what matters is that the vision fits the local reality. If you're the kind of team that wants to make a positive impact in the community, then that's right for you. If you're a team that wants to become the best in the world, then that's the right vision for you. What's important is to stay true to your vision rather than saying one thing and actually doing another. And we can see the power of an effective vision through someone as famous as Martin Luther King, whose famous speech that I have a dream that one day my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. This incredibly inspiring message not only inspired people, but motivated them to act, it united them into one and provided them with a clear sense of direction. His vision did all three things that I described previously. It provided direction, it provided inspiration, and it provided unity. The crucial thing to understand about vision is it describes what reality should be like. And that's why the second quote is so important, because you need to be able to dream of that better reality. It's not about being where we are today. It's about imagining what could be. And that's what was so brave about Martin Luther King. He dared to imagine a much better society, a fairer society. But if he hadn't been able to dream of that society, then he wouldn't have been able to talk about it and describe it in the vision. And that's why it's so important to focus on being brave and being bold in your dreams. You need to think big and work to inspire people with that amazing vision. And the third point ties, the, sorry, the third quote looks at something that's really important, which is that vision is not about providing the details. It's not about saying the little things that we need to do. Now, some people criticize that in a vision and they say, oh, well, that's not very practical, but they completely misunderstand the entire point of a vision. A vision is not meant to be practical. It's meant to describe what the world should be like. And so a good vision inspires people to go and do great things in the service of that vision rather than organizing them in their day-to-day -day tasks. And that's where we really start to understand the key essence of leadership. It's a description of reality, how the world should be. And this is where we need to understand something between being and having. We're not talking about having equality in society. We're talking about being an equal society. And those are two very different concepts. An effective vision is inspiring those people to build that reality and enable them to work together tirelessly through great challenges in order to do that. Because that's another thing to understand. As you work to build your vision, you're going to get smacked in the face quite a few times. There are going to be great challenges and setbacks. And you're going to have to keep working harder and harder to meet, build your vision. But not only that, it's about inspiring the other people to stay with you through the tough times and keep working with you to achieve the vision. And that takes us to the final point. The difference between a goal and a vision. A goal describes a specific achievement in time. A great example of a goal is President Kennedy saying, we will put a man on the moon by the time the decade is out. And America achieved that goal very, very famously. But that wasn't a vision. It wasn't a description of what the reality should be like. Once America achieved that goal, it wasn't clear what it should do next. And that was one of the things that's been haunting NASA for decades. 
What is the vision for NASA? It's very unclear. At the same time, a vision complements a goal because the vision describes how the world should be like. For example, let's build an equal society. And what we can see here is that an effective leader uses goals and vision in combination. A leader uses the vision to describe what reality should be like, but then sets goals in order to build that, that reality bit by bit. So why does vision matter for the team? Well, we talked a little bit about that at the beginning, so we understand the first point of providing clear direction. And we also understand that bit about binding the people together to form one uni unified team. But I really wanted to spend a few more minutes on the idea of inspires people to act, because this is something that a lot of us are very unfamiliar with. You're not ordering people to follow you. You're not trying to provide rational explanations of why you are providing the right idea or the right vision. This is about inspiration. It's about an emotional connection. It's about something deeper where people get so, ex so motivated and excited and interested in what you're trying to do that they will come with you. They say, I believe in this. I want to come with you. And this is something that's sometimes lost in the world today where we're so keen to be so rational in everything that we do. Vision isn't necessarily a rational concept. It's something that ties into something much deeper, much more human than what we're normally used to. So an effective vision to really drill down to what people feel and believe in order to mobilize them to action. In the diagram at the bottom, we can see what happens by that. The reason why that energy is so important is because it enables people to get over their differences and agree to work together as a common uni unified team. In other words, because lots of different people get excited about the vision, they agree to work together, whereas previously they might not have done that. And there's no greater example than Martin Luther King's efforts, where he managed to, through his powerful vision, enable black people and white people and people from all backgrounds to work together to build a more equal society in America. And a good vision enables you to do amazing things. So this is, an, this is a picture I took in Cambodia of the Temple of Angkor Wat. Now, to build that temple was a goal, of course. You know, that was one thing that once it was achieved, had been done. But behind that temple lies an overall greater vision of the Khmer people. They were looking at what, how do we celebrate our culture? How do we celebrate our prosperity? And in order to do that, they built these great temples, but they lived the culture of building great temples. In other words, they had a vision around what life was like for them, and they celebrated that by building these magnificent structures. So the key lesson here is that a great vision enables people to do great things. So how do you create a powerful and great vision? The first step is to describe what the world should be like, but to describe it clearly. It shouldn't be a 50-page thesis of what the world should be like. It should be captured in one or two sentences or a simple diagram. The clarity is the key to effectively communicating your vision. And then, as you create that vision, don't think that you're meant to do it alone. If your idea of creating a vision is sitting on your own and then coming out to be this hero leader who then inspires the millions with your great vision, you're not going to succeed. Instead, you need to work with your people and listen to them and work with them to co-create the vision. By doing that, you get their buy-in. They believe and trust in you because they can see that what you're really doing is not creating your vision, but you're creating a vision for all of us. And this is what Martin Luther King did. He listened to the people. And when he pronounced his vision of, I have a dream of creating an equal society, what he actually was really doing was simply presenting the dreams and visions of all the people that he'd been listening to. And then the third step is to make it very powerful through using the right symbols and emotions and a clear call to action. And perhaps most famously, that's what he did through his concept of, I have a dream, because that enabled people to connect to the resonant message that he was talking about. So what should the world look like? How do you actually go around building a better world? Because it's all well and good to talk about it, but how does a leader actually do it? So in front of you, you have a set of 10 values that we've identified as being crucial for what we think it takes to build a better world. Now, the point is to let these ideals and values pervade everything that you do in your life. They matter because they determine the path that you end up taking. You might think that you're just working in a business somewhere and you don't really make an impact, but your work always has an impact on the people around you, and there are always greater consequences that cascade forth from your actions. So you can think about your work as just doing something every day, or you can think about the value that you're creating through your work. So on the one hand, you can think that you're just making money to get by, or on the other hand, you can think about the fact that you're someone who's enabling a world that's more prosperous and wealthy, or if you're maybe from a team of doctors, you're enabling people to be more healthy and happy. Or if you're working as a lawyer and you're leading a law firm, you're enabling greater justice in the world. 
And though there's a risk of sounding cliche and naive here, in the end, there's something that we have to believe in. And we believe that it's important for leaders to decide to choose in believing something that's good for the world and letting that goodness guide them. Because this is a very important thing to understand. A vision on its own does not build a better world. Values and visions can be used for great good and great evil, as we can see in these two people in front of us. Adolf Hitler firmly believed that he was building a better world, and he mobilized a great many people to try and fulfill his awful vision. Now, what is it that made him evil? It was the fact that he was so obsessed with his own version of the better world that he cared for little of what the other people actually thought and was quite happy to steamroll over everyone else in the pursuit of his grand vision. And this is one of the real dangers of leadership, that we become so obsessed with our version of the truth and our version of the world that we completely forget to acknowledge and recognize and respect other perspectives. So it's important to understand that vision alone does not build a better world. It's simply your vision or your community's vision. What's really important is to respect the power of that tool and to be wise in its use so that as a leader you're working to build a real better world rather than just something that you think makes the world a better place. So let's look at some practical advice on vision. What does it really take to build a practical vision? So the key thing that we think matters is that you need to work with the people together to build the vision. Don't try and do it alone. By working with the people, you enable yourself to create an authentic, meaningful and inspiring vision. And this takes us to the second point. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't need to write a 50-page manifesto. Simple and clear is, above all else, the most important thing in a vision. People need to understand it and empathize with it. So if you're saying that you're running a company and what you want to look for a vision, then believe in building something that's better. Say that we're a company that believes in building prosperity for the local community. Or we're a company that believes in bringing more happiness to the local environment around us. Something as simple enough as that is enough to inspire and motivate people. The key point is that it's authentic and meaningful. And then finally, as you pursue that vision, honor it. Keep it alive. Live it in the day-to-day. -day. Vision is not something that should be launched with big fanfare and then filed away in a cupboard never to be remembered again. You need to live it every day in the way that you think, in the way you talk, and the way you behave. And not only you as the leader, but your entire community need to actively build the vision in order to make it a reality. So in summary, the vision clearly describes the way the world should be. By describing an attractive and aspiring world, it enables people to come together to work towards building that vision. And as people work together, they need to make sure that they honor the vision as they pursue it. By building an incredible vision, you are able to inspire a great many people to work together to build a better world. <laughs>